Hey there, neighbors and naysayers. It's Clint Finney again for another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council web update for January the 28th, 2021. Um, for those of you who have been following along with our virtual updates and virtual pasture walks, uh, we have decided to go ahead and continue to do uh, our virtual or our meetings for the winter months uh, through virtual means, uh, which means there's going to be a a video coming out the fourth Thursday of the month, every month for the months of January, February, March, and April. And uh, we're hoping to do some other updates in between as time allows and as topics come up. But for this month on special assignment, we have Mr. Kevin Swope here to talk with us about working smarter, not harder. So let's get started. Hello everyone, uh, this is Kevin Swope. I am a resource conservationist with the USDA NRCS out of Carrollton, Ohio. A good many of you I know, but probably some of you here listening today may not know me. Uh, I wanted to take some time today uh, to discuss planning. Uh, the title of my presentation is Take Time to Plan. You've heard it said often that people don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. And that statement is very true. And we want to take a little time as part of the January 2021 Eastern Ohio Grazing Council meeting uh, to discuss planning and, and planning really as it pertains to uh, your grazing operation. For those of you that know me, you know, I like a little bit of humor mixed into my presentations and this particular slide is entitled, Are You That Guy? Are you that guy or gal uh, that is so busy with your day-to-day -day operation that you just never sit down to think through or plan out what you're doing next and things just start to snowball on you? And before long, you're that old curmudgeon in the picture and you're starting to look a little frumpy. Obviously, if you're watching this presentation, you're a manager or a grazer of, of some type, uh, whether you are grazing bison or a finished meat product or cattle for that matter, uh, whether you're raising feeder calves, you got a cow-calf operation, uh, whether you're raising cattle, uh, for beef or sheep or any other type of livestock for that matter, uh, you're a grazer. But we have to keep in mind here as we are discussing planning, our main goal as grazers, we've talked about this a lot, is the growing and grazing of our forages. Our goal is to produce high quality forage and as much forage as possible through the growing season uh, for use by our grazing animals of choice. In, in addition to our consideration of growing forages, I want each of you to ask yourself the question, are you working hard or are you working smart? Now you can do both, but I have found that uh, there are times where I was working very hard, but I was not always doing things smart. Uh, this is a good example of things on our operation that we have changed. Uh, it's, there, there are times of the year, particularly now when we're trying to feed in the wintertime, there are other times during the uh, grazing season where we find ourselves in this same uh, situation. It could be a drought, could be other things. Uh, but this is a situation here where I thought I was doing everything right. And, and some of you may argue that I was, some of you may argue that I wasn't, but I was causing resource concerns on our particular operation that I wasn't comfortable with as I stood back and looked at uh, some of the mud and the compaction and things of that nature. I just felt that there needed to be a change in the way uh, we operated during the winter. And we will talk about this uh, a little later in the presentation as well. 
There will be a guide that's going to be listed uh, at the end of the presentation or in a link uh, on on the site. Uh, this guide was suggested to us by members of our leadership team of the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council, and we felt it was a good guide. Uh, the guide's entitled Resource Stewardship Planning. Uh, it is a guide to advance your conservation efforts one step at a time. And that one step at a time, really, the, the, these are things that you really need to stay focused on. You can get overwhelmed with all of the things that you may think you need to do, but you have to keep in mind that uh, these changes to your operation take place one step at a time and over a period of time. I like this Work Smarter uh, page, and we're going to work through uh, each of these individual objectives uh, just briefly, and they're going to be related to our operation, but uh, your operation will be different, and I'd encourage you to think through this as it relates to your operation. Uh, my main goal was just to touch on each of these objectives and, and just give you a couple of brief thoughts and comments on how I have done these things unknowingly, really. Uh, I didn't have this guide, but some of the things and some of the brief changes or some of the changes that we've made to our operation uh, and their overall effect on our uh, function as a grazing operation. One of the very first things that is listed on that guide is being specific about the area of improvement. Now for us, the area improvement, one of the area improvements that I'm gonna talk about was our overall efficiency in uh, fence management and that, that would be both permanent fence and portable fence management as well as our water management. I was finding that I was just spending too much time. You know, I would get out and I would find all oh, this needs fixed or that needed fixed, or I didn't have all the supplies that I needed. So it would it would amount to running back down to the to the barn and then trying to find what it was that I was looking for. And I just had determined that that was just not efficient, wasting too much time uh, with fence and water management. And that will probably be a common theme among a lot of your grazing operations. Uh, and one of the things that I did, uh, oftentimes we think about capital improvements on the farm, but one of the things I did was just to outfit an existing machine that we were using to get in and out of the pastures. Uh, for some of you, this could be a side-by-side. -side. For others, uh, it may be a pickup truck. It doesn't make any difference. But for me, it was the old Big Red, and I just simply decided that I was going to uh, construct a, a toolbox on this machine that would be able to hold and organize all of the pieces of equipment that I use almost on a daily basis. And it has been a godsend to me. Uh, we can haul all of the fencing, all of the watering equipment, all of the portable fence reels, all of the posts. I can throw a weed eater, weed eater on the machine and I can throw a uh, a chainsaw on the machine as well when when needed. So simple piece of three quarter ply and a little ingenuity, and we were in business. Another area of improvement that uh, we needed to make and it was another goal that we had was just a, improving our winter feeding efficiency and improving our bale storage area, you know, so that we could. Uh, buy in feed and maintain that feed quality. Uh, we will cover this later uh, in another grazing council. We're going to do some on site visits to winter feeding operations to see how they manage that. But this was another goal. Now, this was a serious capital improvement for us uh, to build fence, purchase stone and fabric, and put up another building and 
uh, work with a uh, producer to purchase hay from, but just a quick view. This was one of the goals that we had uh, that we've been able to accomplish. Now, one of the, the, the next step uh, in this whole process is determining, you know, if we're going to do something, is there any way that we can measure, quantify, uh, you know, figure out whether we've made any progress in this particular uh, area that we've set as a goal. Uh, one of the things that is a big deal for me, and, and I talk to people about this because I, I think we, we just lose track of uh, the importance of the details. But for me, time management is a big deal. And I tell people this, everybody, every human being on the face of the earth that lived today had 24 hours at their disposal. And we talk about a lot of aspects of stewardship. I want to talk about time management stewardship. And if you really think about it, if you are able to develop something that saves you 15 minutes per day in time spent, that equates to 91 hours and 15 minutes a year. That is an incredible amount of time. That's over a, a two-week work period for, for those of us that work uh, a 40 hour work week. And that time saved allows us on our farm to venture into other uh, avenues. You know, you know about our vegetable growing operation. Uh, but the other thing it does is it allows us to get away from the farm. Heaven forbid we should ever be able to get away from the farm and enjoy some family time. So how you use that time is up to you, but if you can develop a system that will save you just 15 minutes a day, uh, that'll allow you more time to focus on maybe improving your your grazing moves. You you do with it what you want, but 15 minutes a day is a big deal in my opinion. That's one way to measure things. The other thing, and the other way to measure things is by increased forage production. You can measure forage production. And so, again, this is a grazing meeting. We're talking about being able to increase forage production. Uh, so the things, the improvements, if it's a capital or infrastructure improvement, how is that improvement going to help you increase forage production? Uh, these are two ways that I would suggest that would be very important ways that you can and, and means to actually measure or quantify uh, your goals and objectives in time. The next thing that we need to consider, if you're going to do this, the question becomes who's going to do it? And if you're like me and our operation, you're looking at it. Uh, Sarah and I run most of the day-to-day -day operation. We do have help from uh, our daughter, Rebecca, and uh, we have help from the grandkids. They are certainly a growing help, but as we uh, progress or as you progress, you need to really think about, all right, we're going to do this. Now, who is going to be in charge of seeing that it gets done? The other thing we need to keep in mind, we need to be realistic. You know, when we're talking about what results we want to achieve, we have to really be able to step back and we got to think, can we realistically achieve that objective or that goal with the resources that we have at hand? Uh, now, this is one of my resources at hand, but realistically, how much is that boy going to do? In time, he will do some work. But we have to make sure that as we go along, you'll only frustrate yourself if you don't make your goals realistic. This is very important. We need to be realistic in what we want to try to accomplish. Uh, we need to take time to think it through. Uh, we need to think, is this a management change or an infrastructure change? But I, I like Clint's uh, comment. You know, sometimes we get, uh, we have, paralysis by analysis, and that isn't good either, but uh, we want to make sure that we think it through and, and think about the type of change that we want to make. And if we have determined that it's realistic, then we need to 
to get with a program and we need to get, if it's an infrastructure change, we need to start uh, making arrangements and getting materials on hand well ahead of time, well ahead of time, uh, so that when that proper period in time for construction or management changes is there, we've got the materials on hand to get it done. Yeah, in addition to that, again, it's very time related. It's not going to do any good to start trying to roll out water line on a day like today when it's below freezing outside. You're going to have fun on rolling that water line. Uh, but we want to make sure that we keep everything in perspective as it relates to our grazing season, make sure it's very timely in nature. Uh, that is critical. Proper timing is critical. Uh, if we're thinking about rolling out water line, by the time we get to October, you pretty well wasted the entire grazing season uh, with that. So again, we don't want to get tied up in paralysis by analysis. We want to act. We've made up our mind to get it done, make provisions to get it done and get her done. And last but not least, if we've made these changes and we've got everything implemented and we're really uh working with these things through our through our grazing season make sure you take time to to sit back at the end of the season uh or during the winter here now and and evaluate what you did granted weather changes constantly growing seasons are different every year but Take time, even through the season, while you're while you're working with the change or uh, working with the goal that you set, to see if what you had intended has actually been achieved. And if it has not, don't be afraid to revise it. We are constantly uh, revising our management styles. By you know, I, I say if we ever stop learning, we're we're just deceiving ourselves. So if needed, adjust your behavior. And if everything went according to plan and you're happy with it, set another goal. Don't ever stop setting goals. Uh, there, there's never, we've never reached a point in our, in our life or in our uh, quest to operate a farm that we can't set a new goal and, and reach for a little higher standard. Now I'll just wrap this presentation up quickly. Uh, this is the cover sheet for the guide that we were speaking about. Uh, again, there will be a link to this guide if you need uh, for somebody or one of our offices to print this guide out for you. We'd be glad to do that. Uh, there are quite a few pages to this guide, so if you'd like to have a copy of it, don't hesitate to ask. We'd be glad to print these off uh, for you to use along the way. These are going to be kind of wordy. We're not going to go through them uh, entirely, but just to give you a flavor, this is the section on grazing, pasture land, and rangeland management. Uh, this guide will walk you through several pages here uh, related to your operation and will help you kind of narrow down. I find it to be a very nice and, and quick guide to really defining your operation as a whole. It, the guide covers some uh, potential improvement projects. Water is always a big one. Uh, water is a big deal. I, I want to talk about water way more than I want to talk about fence, for those of you that know me. Uh, the guide also does cover your fencing situation, but for new grazers, I would keep your fencing situation as simple as possible. Uh, keep it as movable as possible until you really start to define what it is that you're going to do. In time, the installation of permanent fencing will become obvious to you. Uh, perimeter fence is an obvious one, but any interior permanent type fence, I'd really encourage you to hold off on that. And there are other there are other considerations also uh, in this guide that you'll want to look at. Uh, if you're interested in programs in time, 
Uh, not that we push programs, we do not push programs, but there is an opportunity to learn about programs. The guide also wants you to con uh, consider your return on investment. That is that's critical uh, in your planning. What return on investment are you going to get? For us, with that winter feeding situation we were in, the return on my investment was based upon how much damage we were doing through the winter. How much was I being set back? Also looked at my return on investment, and we've talked about this before on purchasing hay versus making hay. Uh, there's all kinds of things to look at whenever you are planning and working through changes that you're going to make on your operation. And again, after you have uh, gone through and made these changes, really want to encourage you some of these changes you've already made. And so some of this planning time, some of you may be here right now. You may be in a situation where you're doing evaluation of the changes that you made last year or the year before. And you may be thinking about how you're going to revise those uh, changes. And you may also identify some new uh, things that you want to address as well. So a good many of you may be in this stage right here uh, in the planning process where you're doing some evaluation and you're maybe doing some revision. And just to wrap this presentation up, uh, for a good many of you we work with on a day-to-day -day basis, but there may be some of you out there who are watching this and you want to know, all right, what is my next step? Who can I call? Well, I would highly encourage you to reach out to your local Natural Resource Conservation Service office in your particular county. Uh, we come out, it's free. I uh, get asked this question all the time. How much does it cost to have you come out to our farm? And the answer to that is nothing. You've already paid for it with your tax dollars. We are a free service uh, to come out and assist you with planning on your operation. It is a great place to start. Uh, your local soil and water conservation district is also there to help. Uh, most people in a, in a local county, they don't know the difference between the local soil and water conservation district and the natural resource conservation service. We work hand in hand. Uh, oftentimes we come out to your farm together. And so you've got two really great resources at your disposal in the county that you live in. Uh, to come out and give you uh, technical help and help guide you along the way. And just to wrap this up, there are additional resources available. There are links in this guide that you can find. And and there's, there, there are guides to where your local offices are located and how to get started with us. Lots of good information in this guide that I would encourage you to look into. And with that, I just want to thank you for taking the time to, to watch here today. Uh, reach out to any of us, any of the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council members. Uh, whenever we get back into our normal routine, we look forward to seeing everybody face to face. Uh, we're looking forward to pasture walks again and getting back to whatever normal is. Uh, thanks a lot. Take care. Look forward to seeing you. We want to thank Kevin for stepping up and taking over this month and putting together a presentation. We surely do appreciate it. And look forward to, in the next few months, some other folks stepping up and filling in the gap and, and doing some other presentations to cover our winter topics. Uh, be looking for, in the next two weeks, uh, another video or update to come out. We want to talk with you a little bit about 2020 in review and looking ahead to 2021. Uh, also with that, I, I want to talk a little bit about taking soil samples, taking soil tests, uh, and also seedings, uh, both frost seedings and using a drill. Had some questions come in the office and want to make sure we go ahead and get that information out to folks. Uh, in the future, I'll be looking for some more um, updates. We hope next month to be covering some winter feeding issues. We're going to go out to the field and Take some videos from some producers around that got some interesting ways to feed hay in the winter time. After that, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, 300 days of grazing, about an idea of 300 days of grazing and working toward that. 
and we'll have other virtual topics for April. At that point, we are hoping that come May, we will be able to go back to in-person pasture walks. Now that doesn't mean we won't produce videos. We're still trying to figure out how to do both, uh, but we are hoping come May, we'll be back to in-person pasture walks out in the field so we'll get to see all of you. So with that, I'll say thanks and we'll see you next time.